Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we are going to actually have a first part of a two-part video. We're going to make a uh, graphene C60 hetero structure. And so this video will be on just the making of the graphene portion. And in the next video, we will place uh, C60 or also known as this Buckmaster fullerene on top of the graphene sheet. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've already obtained a unit cell for graphite, which um, you can easily easily obtain online. And so here's the unit cell for graphite. You can see what we are going to do is just basically extract one of these layers here. So let's reposition this by clicking on A. So we're along the A axis. So you can see here the A axis and it isn't playing with the page. We do the B axis, A axis. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to first need to expand this unit cell. And I'm going to do this by going up to edit, edit data, unit cell, transform. And I want it to be five by five by one. So we will go five, five, keep the C dimension one. Select okay. Yes. Okay. Apply. And you can see here we have expanded the A and B dimensions of our graphite unit cell by five lattice constants and kept the C dimension uh, in its original uh, length. So now what we will do is we go to File, Export Data. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a VAS file, but we're going to add the end five by five by one. And this is just so we can differentiate it with our original graphite unit cell. So I will save this. Save it in Cartesian coordinates, select OK. OK, now I'm going to exit out of here. And I'm going to open our graphite 5x5x1 five by five by VAS file, which we just saved. And here it is. OK, now what I'm going to do is I have to make this input file compatible with Quantum Espresso or other electronic periodic electronic structure software packages for periodic condensed matter systems. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the graph, the graphene itself. So I'll reposition this on A and just slice off these two layers here. Highlight them and press delete. Okay. Now um, I will have the C dimension facing the page and I will rotate this. And so if I were to place this structure in Quantum Espresso, for example, what would happen is, first off, I need to get rid of these atoms on the outside. And second off, you can see this atom here is the same as the identically same, same atom as this carbon atom over here. And so if I were to save this file as an XYZ and then take the, these coordinates in conjunction with the unit cell I have here and place them into Quantum Espresso, the code would crash. And this is one of the most common failing points I see when people make these hetero structures is they forget about this. And I remember when I was first learning about this, it was very frustrating because I had to account for these. And I found that the simple solution is to just take these atoms and delete them here. You can see here, we don't have to delete in this direction because these are actually inside the uh, uh, boundaries in this periodicity direction. And so here are the actual coordinates that would go into quantum espresso for graphing, uh, five by five by one graphing. This, th these are what they are. And so I go file, export data. And I'm going to take this same name, but I'm going to save it as an XYZ file now. So save. Uh, oh no, I don't want VASP. I want five by five by one, I'll give it the extra XYZ, then I'll save dot XYZ, save. Do not save extra hidden atoms. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We are going to go into our XYZ file and we are going to select these atoms. Okay, so I'm gonna select all of them. And I'm going to go into the VASP file. And what I'm gonna do is delete the current carbon atoms in here. And recall, we have 100 carbon atoms in our XYZ. So I'll change this 200 to a 100. 
I will paste the carbon atoms from the XYZ and delete the atomic name tag. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to add 20 angstroms. Well, I want to add about, I want, I want the C dimension to be 20 angstroms. So it means I have to change the 6.69 angstroms into 20. Okay. Now we can save this, exit. And what we do is we now reopen the VAST file. And you can see here we have our graphing uh, sheet that is compatible with the Quantum Espresso input file. And so you can say, wait a second, didn't we just cut off these extra atoms in the XYZ? We did. And so when we take the structure, this XYZ coordinates and put it into the VAST file and then reopen it in VESTA, VESTA does its magic and repopulates these. But these coordinates, these atoms here, these extra atoms on the outside are not actually present in the coordinate file uh, that we have saved. And so now what we're going to do uh, next time is we are going to take our C60 atom and we are going to place it on top of the sheet right here. And we, are, we will have made our graphene C60 hetero structure. And so let me just expand this now. Uh, let me do three by three. Delete this top layer. So being a little slow here. And you can see now we have our extended graphene sheet. And this is basically what it would look like in our input file. And since we would be doing the quantum espresso, we'd be using plane wave based DFT. We, we of course would want to only keep this unit cell. We wouldn't make this unit cell. It would be uh, too computationally expensive for us to do. Um, Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, if there's any videos that you want to see in particular, just give me a shout out. Uh, I heard something someone was suggesting to me to maybe do one with uh, magnetic clusters on top of graphene sheets and like show how to do that sort of calculation in quantum espresso. Um, you know, whatever you want me to do, I will try my best to make it. Okay, take care. Thanks for watching.